before we get into Tiffany's interview with Michael Bruner of Big Brother 24, we'd like to thank this week's sponsor for the podcast, The Surreal Life. The Surreal Life brought you some of the craziest celeb moments in TV history. Now on Monday, October 24th at 9, 8 central, the first celeb reality social experiment is back on VH1. Buckle up because this season is surrealer than ever as eight unfiltered celebrities from all different walks of fame are forced to live under one roof. Away from the spotlight of Hollywood, these big personalities will step out of their comfort zones and reveal their true selves. Dennis Rodman, August Alsina, Tamar Braxton, Frankie Munez, Manny MUA, Kim Coles, CJ Perry, and Stormy Daniels will connect and collide in unexpected ways, leaving reality fans on the edge of their seat. Trust me, things are about to get surreally wild. Don't miss the Surreal Life. New season premieres Monday, October 24th at 8, 9 central on VH1. Welcome to the Winter Circle. It's your girl, Tiffany. Thanks for joining me. I have a special guest with me today. Before I introduce him, remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Also share. I am joined today by a very special guest, Michael Bruner from BB24. Hi, Michael. Hi. Michael, thank you for joining me. I'm loving your ambiance here. It's, it's, um, it's so professional. Are you at work? No, uh, just in our home office. <laughs> Excuse so me, I, home office. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> didn't have a good spot set up, so like, eh, if I this wall looks kind of nice. Like otherwise, it's that the rest wall. Of the room, so <laughs> that wall is superb. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. You've been out of the house for maybe two, almost three weeks now. Mm-hmm. I want to say that honestly. I was cheering for you like you you. were playing a stellar all-star BB game like just I there were times I tweeted where I was like you know what if I ever go back into the house I hope I can be like Michael Michael you were someone who was in the house involved in so many conversations offering not one bit of information (laughs) And everybody was just giving you every detail of their game. I'm like, is he in the right place at the right time? Is he just this trustworthy or a trustworthy appearing? Why is he getting put in on every alliance, every secret, every detail, and he's offering nothing? I'm trying to figure out how you did this. So (laughs) welcome to the winner circle. Michael, take me back. You know, you're an attorney. You come in this house, you're a BB fan. I saw you even play like BB assimilation games outside of the house. Mm -hmm. You don't tell anyone that you're a lawyer. You come in as an escape room engineer. I'm gonna call you an escape room engineer. (laughs) Fair. (laughs) So before you walk in, I'm sure it seems like you already have your strategy made up in your mind. What's your strategy coming into the game? Yeah, so I think just to touch on my job, I knew I didn't want to tell people that I was an attorney. Um, And after the season, everyone's like, yeah, that was a good call. (laughs) Like, um, I knew that would be because the first week, I know, especially people are looking for any reason to put a target on someone's back. So I was like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to lie. And I had worked for an escape room while I was in law school. So I was like, okay, this is something that I've done. I have stories. I can talk about it. I love doing escape room. So like, it's easy for me to talk about that. So that was something for sure that I knew that I wanted to do. Um, and I, I didn't slip up. Most people dropped their <laughs> occupation lies within the first couple of weeks. So I was happy <laughs> that I was funny. one of the few who actually held on to mine. But um, other than that, the big strategy going in was to be adaptable. We I know from watching Big Brother, really the only thing you can count on is that you're going to be thrown twists. You're not going to know what's going on. And ultimately, the most important thing is how you connect with and play with other people. So that was where I wanted to put my energy um, rather than, you know, coming in saying, like, I'm going to do X, Y and Z thing. And then, you know, you get a twist and those aren't even options anymore. So be adaptable and uh, play play the people. I think adaptability is a very big key to success in Big Brother because you don't know what to expect and things can change at any minute. And if you're not able to adapt and and 
to the change, then you're just lost. So mm -hmm. adaptability really is key. And you really own that because anything that happened, you were like, yep, okay, I'm not phased. I said, is he a robot? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I even thought about that, like, especially with um, Brittany, she would like come and tell me things at the end of the day. And I'd be like, and then be like, basically everyone's coming for you. I'm like, oh, like, okay, I guess we'll try to win. Like, I know, like also, I guess that was part Seriously. of my strategy was like keeping a cool level head because we saw the people who spiraled and freaked out it did not help them. So I was like, you know, I probably should show a little more emotion, but like, I don't know, like, okay, like it is what it is and let's, let's handle it, I guess. None. There were times I would see Brittany like work up a whole thesis to bring to you. And she had like, I know I'm going to be able to let him know this and I'm going to convince him of X, Y, and Z. And then you would listen to her. I, this is where I was like, I need to learn something from this from this man. You would listen and not listen with the intent of I'm not going to change my mind, but you would listen and then you would like come up with feedback. You would process the information, like weed out what didn't matter um, and then give it back to her. And is why these things these things are valid. But these things also don't change the direction of where we're going. So I heard what you said. I'll consider that we're still going to do this. I'm like, damn, even without making her feel like whatever she said didn't go the way that she wanted it to. Like the reasoning, the reasoning, the reasoning was um, it was it was very good. That all was right. the so inner attorney coming... jumping out because that's what I like. People want to tell me all these details. I'm like, okay, we're going to pick the relevant ones. I'm not going to yeah. try to make anyone feel stupid, but like that was definitely where being an attorney helped, I think, because that's what I so do every day. <laughs> is being an attorney natural for you or were you, are you like, now that I'm an attorney and I was trained to be an attorney, I use these skills that I've learned or like, what was it? Is it the, did you learn the skills or because you already possess this personality, being an attorney just comes natural? Yeah, I definitely think there were some skills that I learned um, in law school and doing clerkships and things like that. But I think I've always naturally been a person who listens more than I talk. And I think that is a big part of being an attorney when you are with a client, like you have to listen, obviously you have to talk to them as well. But a big part of it is listening and processing information and, you know, having that conversation, but I think at my core, I'm always, I've always been a good listener. And I think that really helped me in the house. That's dope. And I didn't say this to you prior to, and we haven't had a lot of conversation. So I want to just back up just a little bit. I want to let you know, like my whole intent when I bring in or invite people to come chat with me on the winner circle is um, I am strategic. I'm a thinker. So I definitely want to get into the mind of how we players thought about our game and how we maneuvered throughout the game. But also as a player of the game, it's like welcome to the space that I want to share with you today. And let's just have a conversation and let's have fun. Um, I don't drag. Um, I do that behind the scenes because that's like a <laughs> private conversation people want it to be public and I can't always give people what they want but I I for the people who want to know the game aspect of how a person played and what they were thinking and what was going through their mind I think this is a great space to do it because that's what I come here for so I just wanted to say like usually before I sit down with guests I probably have a previous conversation with them behind the scene to let them know what to expect but I just like to kick it. Like, tell me what you're thinking. I want to know. Like, if I could just take my little knife and open your brain up and see what was inside of there. Like, that's my goal. I want to see. You're going to be like, oh, it's a mess. <laughs> There's so much going on in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you come into the house week one, Michael. What is your impression of all of these guests? Um, I feel like everyone gave off a pretty good first impression from my perspective, at least like I going in, I was like, gosh, I really hope there are a couple people who I just really don't like. There's some people who are assholes yeah. and like rub people mm -hmm. the wrong way. And it can be like an easy thing that it's like, yep, we agree. But really, like at first, you know, everyone was super friendly. Everyone was super talkative. And that was something to like, because I am more of a listener, I was dreading week one because it's 16 people. We all are here for a reason. It's, you know, none of us are, you know, super shy or reserved, but like in big group settings, like I, I don't like big group settings. I much prefer to connect with people on like a one-on-one -on -one or in a smaller group. So I was really afraid. And I think it kind of, 
my fears were confirmed when I think people picked up on that. And I think there were some comments were like, oh, he doesn't contribute as much in the group, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to listen. But, um, but no, everyone was super nice um, at first, at least. <laughs> I want to confirm that. Like, I met you finale night. And um, we're always like me. I'm always trying to see like I want to know the person outside of the house. And I observed you a little bit, and I was like, yeah, Michael just is Michael. He's very chill. He's very reserved. Like you weren't in the circle break dancing, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were like, I'm chilling over here. Um, but then, like when you and I sat down, we did have some one on one conversation, um, and I was like, okay. I see that even in a social setting, in a big setting with people, you're not like, um, you're not looking to be the center of attention or to hold the conversation. So that just really mm-hmm. is your personality that you you weren't playing the game when you weren't um, hold, ha- holding court. That's just you personally, like, I'm just chill. Mm-hmm. I'm not, don't look for me to start start the conversation and go. So that actually worked to your benefit because so after week one, so week one, how did you assess week one? Was it chaotic for you as it was for me at home watching? (laughs) Week one was wild. (laughs) Um, And I'm sure everyone feels that about their season. We didn't have a French EHOH like (laughs) like you did, but there was still a lot going on. And Um, Even just the way the week ended, like unprecedented that someone leaves the game, the first eviction is canceled. But we didn't know that up until we were sitting on the couches and Julie announced it like based everyone, including uh, Brittany and Alyssa, still got their suitcases. They got their suitcases on Thursday morning. So we're like, oh, my gosh, someone is still probably going home today. Like it was it was crazy. There was a lot going on. Have you watched any of the season back? I've watched bits and pieces. I haven't, we all watched, uh, those of us that hung out in LA for a couple days, we watched the premiere together, which was a lot of fun. Um, Other than that, I've watched some of the competitions back. I've watched um, a couple clips here and there. I did watch uh, as uncomfortable and as much as I did not want to watch it back. Um, Week eight, I watched most of those episodes because I was like, I need I want to know what was shown and I know these are questions I'm going to get from people and I want to be prepared as as much as I can to know what perspective people are coming from. But um, other than that, not a whole lot, but. Okay. So let's see. So week one, you're on the block. Yep. (laughs) This is nobody's plan when they come into the big brother house. I remember having so much anxiety, even though week one, Frenchie was like a a madman. I felt close enough to him that he wasn't going to nominate me, but I also wasn't upstairs in his HOH, so he easily could have. I was nervous. You're always nervous until like the replacement noms have been named. Michael, you ended up on the block week one. Why? <laughs> it was mortifying. Um, I just remember sitting around that table, you know, as Daniel turns the key. And it was funny, from from where I was sitting, I couldn't see the bottom half of the monitor. So he turns the key and I'm like, oh, like someone's picture probably popped up. I'm like, oh, I can't see it. And, and then I see the corner of a pink shirt and I'm like, no, that is my photo. What happened? Where did I go wrong? But I, I, you know, I haven't watched the episode. I, yeah. from what I've been told, Daniel recognized that I was a super fan, wanted me out. Um, I don't know. Do you it, think it was like social game as well because you hadn't like had many conversations? Maybe that he just didn't feel a so connection. I like. <laughs> I call BS if that if he is saying that is his reasoning because I tried to initiate. Oh, I haven't talked to him. I wouldn't. So many him conversations him. with him. That's what he said to okay. everyone that it was you. Know, oh, we talked yeah, yeah, the yeah. least. And I was like, I was right. literally I the first person who, because d- night one, nobody wanted to talk game or maybe I did, but I was like, I'm not about to start that. Um, but yeah. no one talked game with Daniel, at least that I saw day two. I remember I went up to him and was like, Hey, like, you know, as uncomfortable as it is, we're probably going to have nominations. It could be today or tomorrow. Like I would love to chat with you at some point. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah kind of dismissed it and left the storage room. And then I think I was the first person who actually had a formal one-on-one with him because I was like, we can't just ignore this. We know noms are going to happen. And there were other times when, like, because 
on paper, Daniel and I actually do have quite a bit in common. Like we're both theater kids, you know, we're both mm-hmm. fans of the show. Like there was a lot that he and I had that we could have connected on. And okay. I don't know what it was about me, but he would leave conversations. We'd be talking for like five minutes. Like I'm going to go grab some food. He'd never come back. I think he, he wanted to target me from very early on. And when someone wants to target someone, they try to avoid them typically. So yes, I don't know yes, to this yes. day and maybe I'll never know, but must've done something to rub in the wrong way. <laughs> so you, um, you're nominated, but then you win the veto. Now you may not give me the truth. How did you know how to win these competitions? Are you just good? I guess so. I, literally walking out to that first veto, my heart dropped. I was like, this is like some hand-eye coordination stuff. When I get nervous, my hands get really shaky. So I was like, okay. I'm fucked. <laughs> like, I'm going home okay. first, I guess. So like, I don't know what it was, but when it came to game time, I pulled it together. I it, To this day, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so you just gave there, it your all. And yeah, you I mean, there were some competitions that, like, I was prepared for or from watching the show. You know, like, Otev, I knew, like, make your stockpile of your answers, things like that. But some of those ones that, like, the Mermaid Fest one, that was a brand new one. Uh, you know, the jousting thing, that was new. So I was like, I'm just going to yes. try to stay calm and focused. And I tried to learn when I watched other people go because I was lucky enough to go in the last round for that first veto. So I was like, okay, I see that people are catching their their rings on the hook. So make sure to like pick up the thing. Yes. So, it, so I don't do oh, that. So there's a benefit to not going first. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you were learning as you were watching. Okay, yep. Michael. So you win the first veto. Mm-hmm. Did you have to win the second and the third veto? I, I know you're a Leo now. <laughs> Listen, I'm a Leo too. And we are not prideful as our Zodiac says. <laughs> and we are not egotistical, as our Zodiac says. So I know you going out there to win had nothing to do with pride and ego. Why did you feel the need to win the next three consecutive or the, the, the first three consecutive vetoes? Yeah. So week three, that was pretty easy. Brittany and I were on the block. It was like, even though yes. everyone's saying that there's a backdoor plan in place, I was like, nope. Like, if you're on the block, you do not throw a veto. So that one was easy. Yeah. Week two, I still felt like I was a little bit behind the curve. Because um, when you go up week one, you know, those. even though I won the veto, you know, I'm still on the block till Monday. People don't like to strategize with people who they think could be going home. So going I really home. did feel like yeah. I was behind. And when I did feel like I had an in with um, the women in the house, it was obvious that they were kind of working together, especially on Jasmine's HOH. And they were kind of including me on things, kind of, sort of, not really. Like they were telling me things after the fact. So I was like, okay, I have some sort of in here. I've been picked for the veto. If I can win it and, you know, try to show some good faith, they're like, hey, I'll use a veto how you want. Maybe that'll get me in the fold a little bit more. Plus I really wanted Pooch out that week. So I was like, if there's any chance that he's going to win it, I'm going to win it so he can't. <laughs> Who at this at this point, you're you were on the block week one, you won veto, you come off. Um, people know now that you're not leaving. Who mm-hmm. in your mind are you locked in or thinking about? I want to move forward within this game because you always said like I'm not trying to work with the guys. I don't want to be stuck with these guys. You kind of seemed like you wanted to work with the girls, but you never really seemed like you wanted to work with a large group. Um, who in your mind, like week one, had you after you assessed the house? Because you seem like a person who like assesses the situation and kind of makes his determination after he has um, all of like the important facts. Who had you decided you wanted to move forward with? Um, exactly. And I, Brittany and I joke about this. Like it was not smart for the two of us. Like, cause day two, we talked about working together and like solidified something. I was on the block or I went on the block the next day. Brittany was backstage. Like we could not help each other out in any way, shape or form, but there was just something about Brittany that I was like, our energies match. I can tell that you are also listening and taking in information. You're not trying to draw attention to yourself. There's just something about Brittany that I I saw a lot of the qualities that I have in her. And I was like, that's someone that I want to work with. And going in, it's funny. Um, I was like, I want to have a working relationship like Tiffany and Chada had someone where it's like you, the two of you easily could have been intimidated by each other because you were both very smart, very strategic. But I was like, I want someone like that, that I can bounce those ideas off of and who's not going to be intimidated when when I have 
strategic you plans. You need it. You mm-hmm. need it. You really do need it. You need someone who can vibe with you. It never occurred to me that she'd be intimidated by me or that I'd be intimidated by her. When I found out that she was ready to scheme, I was like, oh, yes. yes. So that's cool. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Like night one, I was like, I want to talk game with people. Like, what are we doing? But I was like, I didn't want to show that side of me too soon. So Um, you already made it in your mind. Yeah. Week one, I had been approached to be part of what later became known as Pose Pack. Um, Mm -hmm. but it was Paloma, Paloma approached me and told me, you know, it's me, Amira, um, Alyssa, Kyle, Monty, and you, you're the last, you're the last one to form the six. And here's our name. And it was like, you're telling me I'm the last one brought in. I had no say in the name of the Alliance of who was in it. I was like, absolutely not. And then I go on the block the next day and I was like, Hey, guess who's all in on this Alliance? Like, I was like, I need you guys for now, but I did not feel good with that at all. Not guess who's all in on this alliance. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm not feeling this. As a matter of fact, I'm feeling it wholeheartedly. Yeah. It was funny. Like, literally, when, because Paloma had that conversation with me in the storage room, as soon as she walked out, I just looked at the camera and I was like, absolutely not. I want no part of that. And then I was like, well, I guess this is my only option right now if I need the votes to stay. But I was not feeling good about that group at all. Okay. All right. So then who were you feeling like you wanted to work with if it wasn't them? Um, so there were people within that group that I did want to work with. Um, okay. and I but actually, just not as a whole. Yes. And especially like you're the last one we brought in. Here's the name. And it was like I wanted to work with people who was like, we are going to collaborate. It's not going to be you're coming to me and telling me this is what we're doing. So I think – and it was hard because everyone was in so many things that first week, like, except for me, I felt like, which actually I think helped me in the long run that I didn't have all these alliances that I was breaking and backstabbing people. But um, I I actually did really want to work with Amira. I was like, I think Amira is very smart. She's well connected. Um, I really wanted to work with Taylor. And so it was just like heartbreaking when it was like, I think she's going home first and I don't feel like there's anything I can do to save her, but just like Taylor's sense of humor, I get a hundred percent, but other people like you, like, and we had this like big, like group therapy session around the table where we talked about like, we truly trauma dumped on each it. other, basically. Yeah, and Taylor I made a joke that. about and the like the crying, the yes. crying session, like stabbing and, somebody in the front. Yes, and, and I'm back. like, for me, I'm like, I don't. That doesn't intimidate me. Like, I love that you just said I that in front of a group of people. That. Yeah, and then everyone else I was actually like, actually oh tweeted. Gosh. I tweeted about that. I was like, yes, girl, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna stab you in the front and not the back. Like, I respect that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so the was, house. And yeah, Taylor is actually mad about it. Yeah. And which I was like this, those, the little things that people look for to paint a target. And it's just like, okay, whatever. But Taylor was actually, um, I, the night I got nominated, I was like just in the kitchen standing, looking at the memory wall. And she comes up to me and she's like helping me count like votes and stuff. And like, these are the people that you could talk to. And I was like, you are like the only person like who is actively trying to help me. Like my, the, my Alliance at that point, you know, they were like, you've got the votes, you're good. But like, someone who was like we hadn't talked a lot of game at that point and she's coming up and like reassuring me apparently she went to the cameras later and was like gosh I, like i i don't want to have to vote him out but i think i might have to <laughs> but it was like it just it meant a lot that like you know she sat there and she counted votes like she did give me really good advice and so um she was someone that i wanted to work with and then to find out like me pulling myself down like she's probably going up i'm just like oh and then we were in the same exact situation week three when i won the veto like didn't end up happening that way but i was like winning the veto at her expense, it felt like, but I was so glad that things got to the line and we could, um, could work together. (laughs) So week two, Jasmine's HOH, Mm -hmm. you actually try to have a conversation with Jasmine about, uh, back during Joseph. Um, (laughs) it was a messy (laughs) moment where we had been all talking, uh, like I forget who was in there. I think it was me, Alyssa, Amira, Jasmine, maybe Daniel was in there. I don't remember. But Amira was talking about the following week. Because in our minds, we're like, mm-hmm. hey, it's done deal. Pooch is going home. And Amira made it some sort of comment about, she's like, the only person I can put up next week is Joseph. He's the only person that I don't have promises with or something mm-hmm. to that effect. And other people are saying like, yeah, yeah, like Joseph. And like at that point, I don't know what I was thinking, but I was like, that's where I was like a little messy. Like, hey, like we have the veto, we have the votes. Because yeah. at that point, like... 
with peace and love. Sorry, but yeah. Pooch was playing so horribly. I was like, why yeah. are we getting rid of him? And I, I wasn't going to keep him to vote Taylor out. Like, that was never going to happen. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, but if someone else is on the block, yeah. maybe. But And, like, as soon as it left my mouth, I was like, oh, why did you say that? Like, I would much rather work with Joseph. And, like, even after that, like, uh, Amir and I went downstairs and was like, I fucked up. I should not have said that. And luckily it didn't go anywhere. Um, no. and I, oh, Indy was in the room too, because Indy was like, eh, I don't want to get rid of Joseph. And it was kind of like a, let me show you guys trust. Like I'm looking out for mm. us. I'm willing to use the veto to do a bigger move, blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I'm very glad it did not take off. And I was like, as soon as those words left my mouth, I was like, oh, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> That's the scary thing. I remember, I have had nights where I've laid in my bed going, oh my God, if somebody goes and says that I said this like there have been so many times I've laid in my bed like why did you why did you say that to them like if they talk about that and then you wake up in the morning looking at them wondering if somebody told what you said mm -hmm. you were a person that I don't recall people ever going back saying well Michael said and I think that is such um that is such a resume builder too. It's a it's a skill to have, but it's a great quality to possess that no one is repeating things that you're saying to them because obviously to me it means you trust me. Like you trust me enough to not reveal the things I've confided in you and mm -hmm. you probably want to work with me. I kept saying Michael's name is not in anybody's mouth. Nobody is saying what Michael said because mm -hmm. Michael rarely said anything <laughs> yeah. that could get back. And so I can understand how in that moment you're like, oh, my God, I said something that could mm -hmm. come back to haunt me. So I'm uncomfortable with this, but it didn't. It didn't yeah. come back. It didn't come back to haunt you. OK, so week three, you win the veto. And now there's another alliance forming. And it's the leftovers. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of formed without you again, another alliance that you're kind of being brought into, how do you feel about being brought into the leftovers? I felt really good about it. So okay. um, I, I didn't, I don't think it was in the episode, but Kyle had come to me before the veto and kind of said a little bit like, hey, like talk to some people last night because Brittany and I were on the block. It was Joseph's birthday that at midnight so we went to bed very early like we stayed up to midnight to celebrate joseph and like we got a veto to win tomorrow we're going to bed and that's when that conversation happened but um so when kyle first floated the idea i was like yes absolutely i don't care my answer whatever you're pitching is yes because at that point i felt you know not good at all with pose pack like yeah. we had never met as a group we it was just and, and come to find out, people have said since then that post pack actually was their priority. It did not feel like that whatsoever uh, in the house. So I was like, this is just a thing. They're using us for numbers. Um, so when I heard that there was another alliance I was forming, I was like, yep, I am all in on that. And it it was a little bit similar to the post pack thing where it was something that I was brought into, but it wasn't like this is established. You are the last one in. Yeah. We already have an, we didn't, there was no name. Yeah. There was like, and yeah. we all met and even you just felt like, like this alliance was forming. You were brought mm -hmm. into a forming of an alliance, yes. not an alliance that had already formed. Exactly. There's a difference. Yeah. Yep. And the people who were in the alliance, too, I was like, OK, everyone here seems to be pretty rational, level headed. Um, yeah. And that's what I was looking for with people like not trying to work with every single person. And because kind of with Impulse Pack, like, um, so Monty, Kyle, and I, we were have-nots together the first week. Then we were all in the car bedroom the second week. So we had talked probably, I had talked quite a bit with them. And so, like, I knew where their heads were at. I could see the types of game they were playing. And I was like, okay, I like the vibes they're putting out. It's not messy. It's not chaotic. That's what I'm looking for. And so to hear that, you know, kind of they were in the talks of that, I'm like, okay, I trust your judgment. So I'm in. <laughs> Okay. So just to give you a little background, I um, joined the Winner Circle uh, on my own channel, which is, uh, I was doing recaps of BB24's live feed. Mm. So Cody and Derek tricked me into watching live feeds. No, I'm just kidding. I was <laughs> a live feeder anyway. They're like, since you're a live feeder, just come on here. So I was up with you guys, you made my summer a living hell. I'm so I am sorry. still on PST time because Pacific Standard Time because I had to 
go to sleep at 4 and 5 and 6 a.m. watching you guys strategizing games. So I was up watching live the formation of The Leftovers. You downstairs trying to get Taylor to go upstairs. (laughs) Joseph trying to get Taylor to go upstairs. Her sitting there fake engaged with a conversation with the girls who don't even like her, who've only included her in one conversation, which is this one. And you guys trying to get her to go upstairs to the HOH room. And I'm like, girl, I'm trying to go to bed. If you don't get upstairs and listen and find out what's going on, they're trying to bring you into an alliance and I need some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was me watching. So I've been like on this journey with you guys this whole time. But because I'm old and I'm a mama and I run several businesses, I don't remember everything. And people hold me to that too. They be like, she didn't. And it's okay. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> at, tell my mama I didn't because she also mad about some shit I didn't do. Anyway. <laughs> So you get brought into the leftovers. Um, week five, you win veto again. Do you think you should have thrown that to Terrence and used? Yes. Uh, it, yeah, and use the veto on him anyway. Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, yes and no. I do think at that point I was, I had already won three vetoes and an HOH. Mm-hmm. I was like, what's one more veto at this point? And it's Otev and. <laughs> Um, Who doesn't want to win Otev? Right. But it, unfortunately, I kept finding myself like I did not want to ever be in the position where I felt like I had to win competitions to stay in the game. But when I was yeah. on the block week one and week three, I was like, OK, I have mm-hmm. to win these. And then even little things like um, the bye bye backstage thing for the first part of the second HOH, I was mm-hmm. paired against Pooch. And I was like, if Pooch wins, I'm probably going up. I have to beat him in this. Or for the HOH, I went second after Daniel. I have to try to, my best to beat Daniel's time because if he wins, I'm probably going up. So yeah. I was in these positions where I was like, I didn't want to win, but it's like, okay, I have to win. Now I was like hoping another leftover would knock me out of the HOH and take it yeah. for themselves. It just didn't happen. So at that point, I was like, you know what? People are going to use anything as an excuse. I might as well get the power. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, like, I don't know. I'd love to be a player who can win the competitions and choose not to, than to have to win competitions and can't. <laughs> And I always so. said going in is like I would always way more regret throwing a competition and going home than sure. winning too much and becoming a threat. It was like, you know what? If they took me out because they were threatened, I can live with that. Then, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to live with the rest of my life that I threw the competition I needed to win. Such a Leo. I'm here for <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. So um, also that same week, um, Kyle is doubting working with the leftovers He's trying to get you to consider leaving nominations the same and sending home Monty. Were you seriously considering that? No. Um, And I knew I fucked up in the DR when I played the like hypothetical, like, what if I did this? Because I I went in there and talked about all my options. And I was like, when I left, I was like, I know what's going on TV and it's not because option one, like I wanted Daniel out of that house so bad. Like Daniel, I wanted him so bad and then wanted him out, wanted him out. Yeah. That sounded bad. (laughs) Listen, you never, I was never going there. I knew you didn't want him so bad. Uh, Um, Yes. Just say this. That's it. The the other thing that I, I did consider was if I do take out, if I leave nominations the same and send Terrence home, Mm -hmm. Um, Because keep in mind, we didn't know that the Festy Bestie twist was going to end uh, the following week. So I was like, right now, there are five pairs of Festy Besties. If I Mm -hmm. take Daniel out, Kyle will join another pair. And that leaves us with four, which puts us in a position where someone wins HOH, someone wins Veto. These people are nominated. The Veto holders pull them down. Brittany and I could be forced to go up. Because there okay. is no other option. So I okay. did have the thought, if I take Terrence out, that would leave five Festy Bestie pairs in. And then there isn't a scenario where Brittany and I are forced up on the block. So I did seriously consider that option. But ultimately, yeah. it was a Safety. bigger risk to leave Daniel in. Um, because I, I felt like of the people outside the leftovers, he had the best chance of winning an HOH competition. 
Okay. Okay. But I always um, was like, I'm always going to entertain all options and try to think through everything. But no, it was always I wanted Daniel. Second would have been Terrence for that reason. And then but I was like, you know what? If things go crazy, shit hits the fan and Monty's on the block and everything blows up. You know, he's a big target. Me, if yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But um, I knew it was way too early. Yeah, to turn because on the he sent you home. But we won't talk about that. Yet. <laughs> right. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. See, he, you might have not ever gone home had you sent him home that week. Yeah, I, I, maybe the next week or the following one. But I, I yeah. don't regret leaving him in that week at all. No, no, I get it. Because it could have been damaging for your game mm-hmm. more, much more sooner. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's see. Week six, um, we saw you pit both sides of the leftovers against each other in week six. Mm-hmm. Was that intentional? Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So I will say, and I, from the clips that I've watched, I don't think it really made the episodes, but I was very aware of the position that Joseph was in in the house. He obviously had the leftovers. He had great relationships with the other side. And it was like, you are okay. sitting so pretty. And that's a position I want to be in. So <laughs> I was definitely trying... One. Yeah, so I was trying to play the middle, um, especially I was like, okay, if there are cracks in the leftovers, I want both sides to think they need me. Um, yeah. And you know what? It probably was a little messy, and I think people saw through it and recognized what I was doing. But at the same okay. time, I was like, even if they recognize it, if they still think there's a chance they could have me on their side, it's not the worst thing in the world. So I definitely wanted to play the middle there. Okay. All right, so now we get to the split house twist. Mm-hmm. What are, what are you thinking when you hear there's going to be a split house? And I automatically know you're thinking I've got to win yep. because you did. So it's a split house. We don't know what's going to happen. We've never had anything like this happen in Big Brother before where there are two different games going on at the same time. Mm-hmm. And you decide like, I've got to win this. Did when did you decide your strategy on picking your your team? Um, th- as I was standing there, <laughs> uh, okay. there was so much going on because um, you know, when Julie announced the twist, I'm like, okay, oh my gosh, like that's two groups of five at final five. Like things can get messy, and you know, there again, with yes. if someone off the block wins the veto and uses it, so I was like, I have to win to guarantee that I'm mm-hmm. safe, and then mm-hmm. you know, we'll figure it out from there. I did think it was like, okay, if the leftovers are going to stay strong, we need to make sure that there's someone outside the leftovers in both both groups so that there's someone to target. So I did have that, you know, mindset. And then, um, so you're thinking I, on the fly. Yes, it, it was, okay. it was a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, so I knew I was like, it kind of seemed Jasmine was our next target because we definitely saw Jasmine as the biggest strategic and social threat outside of our Alliance. So I was like, okay, okay I I'll pick Jasmine you know, knowing that we'll probably target her this week because I picked Jasmine. I cannot pick Alyssa because if I pick Alyssa, then there's, there's four leftovers who are vulnerable outside. So I can't do that. And then I was kind of thinking, and this was maybe not my smartest thing, but I was like, Brittany and Taylor, they're my two closest allies. I do not want to risk their game. So if I can keep them inside with me, um and put the other two people up there's no way that any of the three of us are going home this week because even if one of them wins a veto they're not going to use it to send the other home so i kind of showed some cards i think with who i was closest with in that moment um is that why you say it probably wasn't the smartest because you showed your cards yeah i think people and i think especially the people outside um were a little salty about it because obviously it was like, I'm not picking you. I'm sending you outside with Terrence who we have no idea what he is going to do. Um, So that was, yeah, again, probably not the smartest thing, but at that point, you know, I was like, I want to be safe. So I'm going to try to win this and I'll deal with the repercussions. And um, that's kind of where we went. (laughs) So who did you think was going to go home from Direfest? You know, that probably changed 10 times an hour. Like, I would think about things. And um, so Terrence, because he had been on the block the previous week against Indy, and his pitch to stay, at least to me, was that he wants to take a big shot. He said if he had won, you know, with no twist, you know, the prior week, he was saying he would have put up Monty and Kyle, 
if one of them came down, he would put up Alyssa. I don't okay. know if that was true. I don't know if I necessarily believed that, but I was like, okay, so there's a chance he's going to go after Kyle. Maybe he'll put up Kyle and Alyssa. Maybe he'll put up Joseph and Alyssa um, since Joseph and Monty were close. And if he doesn't have Monty out there. Um, so the only person that I didn't think he would go after would be Turner, but okay. um, it, it changed 10 million times a day. <laughs> So I watched a conversation with you and Brittany while you were taking that two hour ice cold bath <laughs> and you both were saying, hopefully Kyle comes back and Terrence sends home Joseph. So yeah. It seemed and that like again was a, uh, so Joseph for me, to go home. At that point, I was very wary of Joseph. Like, I trusted that he wasn't going to put me up. But Joseph had done a couple things that um, put me and Brittany in danger when we were festy besties. We had come up with a plan that after my HOH week, we're like, okay, if we still have festy besties and someone outside the leftovers wins, we'll try to convince them to put me and Brittany up as pawns because the only way we were in danger was if we had been backdoored because we mm -hmm. had someone in the leftovers and all the pairs who could use the veto if we were on the block. And, mm -hmm. but I, and I told every, like specifically Joseph, cause he was like really excited about the plan to go and like start. I was like, but we cannot tell anyone this until we know Festy Besties are still a thing. Cause if the twist mm -hmm. ends and someone wins and they're gonna be like, oh, well, everyone wants Michael and Brittany up. Let's put Michael mm -hmm. and Brittany up when at that point we could try to convince them to do something else. So I said it multiple times until we know the twist is over. Like, we do not say anything. We go downstairs. Okay. An hour later, Joseph goes, oh, good. Uh, good. I caught you. I talked to Jasmine, and she's on board. I'm like, no. We literally said we do not talk about this until Thursday, and it's like Tuesday. So, like, in my mind, I was like, he's playing us. He has to be playing us because we were so explicitly clear what this plan looks like, and he fucked it up within an hour. So, I was like, he is against me or, like, I don't know. So from that point, I was very skeptical of him. I realized the position he was in. So I was like, if someone else can take him out, that's better that the blood isn't on my hands. But um, it probably jumps around 100 know? times that week of who I thought was best to leave. So did you know at that time that he was playing double agent or you were figuring out that he was playing a double agent? So or did, you, did I just... Did you know he was playing a double agent at all? Yeah, Joseph was very open with us that, okay. you know, he had good relationships with the other side and he was talking to them. And he would, and, you know, to his credit, he did bring us back a lot of that information. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I did trust Joseph's loyalty to the leftovers, but I also saw it as a positioning thing like, hey, if someone from the leftovers does go, you know, if Michael and Brittany are up, that's not me. So, like, I kind of thought that's what he was doing. Um, I, I, from talking to him since then, I found out I'm wrong and I will admit that I was wrong. I'm sorry, Joseph. Um, but I, I did trust him because he told us so much, like, you know, he told us about the five swatter deal or whatever. So I did trust him, but I also recognized he was in a very, very good spot. He had a fantastic social game. Um, I was also annoyed with him because I knew he was throwing competitions and I was like, you have to oh, win the. You think he was throwing of, competitions? Oh, he he told me that he threw the wall competition um, straight up. He told yeah. me that, and I was okay. like, and and that at that time I was you know annoyed about the debacle about the plan from the week before, and I was like, you are sitting in such a good spot. Like Monty got a bunch of blood on his hands trying to get the veto not to be used his week. I got blood on my hands because half the house wanted me to keep Monty on the block to send him home. And, you know, Joseph, you win a competition, you get some blood on your hands for once. Yeah. Like, I was like, you. and I do recognize he was helping out the Alliance a lot. But when you're getting blood on your hands and then someone else is not willing to do so. And then I, I was like, oh, I was annoyed. I think that was around the time I, I know I ranted one day about I was so annoyed and fed up because both Kyle and Joseph were talking about like, Oh, but our jury votes, we have to be careful. I was like, fuck your jury votes. Like, I don't have the luxury of thinking about my jury votes because I'm, I won this HOH to try to keep us all safe. And now I'm pissing off half the house. And oh, I was so mad because I was like, you can yeah. feel that way, but don't voice that to the people who are probably going to go home before you because we're sticking our necks out for you. So I was like, ah, oh, that maybe was not my finest moment, but I was so mad. <laughs> So, but it's a game. I recognize it's good gameplay on their part, but I was like, don't rub it in my face. <laughs> I I understand. I get it. Like, I always look at my season as, okay, like, I was strategizing and masterminding, but 
um, Kai had the most blood on his hands. So I was like, okay, as long as it's you and not me. But so I, so I, I get that. Blood on your hands is never like a great thing because yeah. people, <laughs> those, the blood on your hands are the targets that are going to come back for you. All right. So you're inside Big Brochella. They're outside Dire Fest. You've got all of these things um, that are leading to you wanting to target Joseph or hoping that Joseph leaves. However, right before this was when Kyle kind of came to you and Brittany about his theories around um, a sub alliance, a PLC alliance forming. Um, during the time that you're in Big Brochella, your HOH, you and Brittany are still saying, and I get it for your game, you're like, well, Joseph has all of these things about him that it would be better for our game if he left. But why not Kyle if... If that was a time when you knew about him having these ideas and trying to form another alliance with you guys outside of the POC, why weren't you like hoping, well, maybe Kyle will go and then his whole theory and us being uncomfortable with this information that we have about him, um, whether it's good for our game or not, because that was what you said when you brought it up, that it wasn't it wasn't a game move. Why not? Because we never heard you say like, well, we hope it's Kyle. It was always like, we hope Kyle comes back. Mm hmm. And there were days where I was like, gosh, it would be so much easier. And I know I talked about that in the DR when I talked about all this. I'm guessing that wasn't on the okay. show. But there were definitely times where I was like, gosh, it would be so much better if Kyle is the one who goes home and this information doesn't have to be part of the game or this doesn't have to, you know, the game doesn't then have to go to that personal level that is removed mm -hmm. and, you know, didn't have to be the one to send someone in the Alliance home or anything like that. So there were, there were days where I was like, that would probably be easiest, but from the strategy point of the game, I, I did view Joseph as a bigger threat to win the game. I didn't because mm -hmm. at that point too, um, a lot of the talks that we were having with Monty and Taylor were about uh, Kyle going next. And I was like, okay. yep, like perfect. Kyle is being yeah. targeted without me having to even say anything or bring this up. Like that is good. Like he, the game's going to take his course and he's going to go home. If it's this week, if it's next week, you know, that's good, <laughs> I guess, okay. essentially. Um, okay. But I don't know. My mind changed 10,000 times about what I thought was happening, what I wanted to have happen. And I, I, at the core, I did always recognize, so I'm not going to, you know, sit here and say, oh, no, I didn't want Joseph to go. Like, I recognized Joseph mm -hmm. was a huge threat. And I was like, if he goes mm -hmm. without me having to do anything, you know, that's and hindsight 2020 it was not good for me that joseph left and i should not have ever wished that but um at the time with so the information you, i had did you and terrence ever have a conversation or an understanding that just he would target joseph in dire no. fest no. no and i Sorry, thought it was Julie. a rumor I saw there was a rumor sorry, going around. <laughs> it might have been, I might have helped add. Sorry, Julie Chen. <laughs> sorry, Julie, that in our, our interview, I told you that Michael told Terrence to kick out Joseph. Michael is here confirming that he never said that. So I was incorrect with my um, um, false facts um, and alternative facts. <laughs> and Michael never said that to Terrence. And I just was thinking to myself that Michael wanted Joseph gone or I was believing Twitter. <laughs> no. So what did happen? So when Terrence and I won that competition, you know, they had us like kind of stand apart in the yard to do our picks. And Terrence tried to say something to me before the pick started. I have no idea what it was. I couldn't hear him. He told me after the fact that he was saying, like, what do we do? But. Who knows if that's what he said or not, you, okay. um, which I, I believe. I, I don't think he would. You know, so you didn't tell him to, to target lie, Joseph. No, because, yeah, the rumor but that I saw know was that him targeting Joseph would be good for your game. Yes. Yeah. But him targeting Kyle would not have been good for your game. It would. However, and it wouldn't have 
Like, okay. I think there were areas where it would have been good, but there were areas where it was like, based on, you know, Kyle being very open about being ready to turn on the leftovers. I was like, the fact that you're yeah. sharing that with me makes me think that when you turn on the leftovers, like you're counting on me to be on your side. So yeah. if you win an HOH, it's not going to be me going up. So from that perspective, I because Kyle, so Kyle and Brittany were really the only two that I was having conversations with about when we get down to seven, do we want to get down to seven? Taylor a little bit was starting to approach those conversations with us, but Turner, Monty, and Joseph, I did not hear anything about that. Not a peep about what do we do turning on the leftovers early. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, if you're not having those conversations with me, you're probably having those with other people. Um, yeah. which I guess they had their pound alliance, but, um, Joseph says he wasn't having those conversations at that point, but, um, you know, I guess I'll never know what was actually said. <laughs> Sorry, right. I don't even know if that answered your question. This is an no, insight no. into my DR session it's, where no, it's I just okay. spiral and snowball. <laughs> it's okay. We're, it's, it's a story coming together. Yeah. <laughs> so Joseph leaves Direfest. Jasmine leaves Big Brochella. Um, which was your target, your HOH went intended. That was, she was always your target. Um, you guys knew she was leaving. Uh, you and Brittany, you've always kind of been working together. So Big Bro Chelly, your your relationship kind of still cultivated and developed. Um, you and you, her and Taylor were like the final three. Did you know um, that Monty was like, well, Taylor was trying to get Monty and Brittany to target you um, at some point. Like, we need to work together and get Michael out. I'm sure you knew because Brittany ended up mm -hmm. coming to tell you, right? Yeah. Okay. Did, were you fearful of that at all? Because was, was, you said you spoke in the beginning about our in our interview, like you worked on adaptive, uh, being adaptable. But then mm -hmm. I also said that Brittany would come and bring you back information and you just seemed unflustered by it. So how are you taking the information like Monty is, is like, well, Michael has to go? Yeah. So with that... It was tough because at that point, everybody was saying that I had to go when I, yeah. so it was like, wh who do I move forward with? I was like, you know what? Maybe there is a chance as slim as it is that with Monty, you know, I'll stay, stick around maybe one extra week because we do have more of an established game connection. We have a final four with the big Brochella people. Whereas with Terrence, Turner, Alyssa, I, Alyssa to an extent, I, I, was like, maybe she goes after Monty before she goes after me. But Terrence and Turner, I was like, I think they're going to come after me. I didn't have a lot of other options that I felt good about outside of sticking with Monty and Taylor and Brittany. So I was like, I guess I'll stick with the people who I have had game talk with. Um, so and and I will also say that the, you know, Dire Fest crew they never threw Monty under the bus to me, which is wild to me. Like they were quick to, you know, Terrence threw Turner under the bus, Turner threw Terrence okay. under the bus. Like they never, you mean when once, they came back in, um, when I won that net, the HOH, um, at final seven, um, okay. you know, there it was, Terrence was telling me, you know, Turner came up with this plan to backdoor you and, you know, Alyssa and Kyle were in on it, it but it was never, Hey, Monty was also in on this and he ran straight to us, which is like, that may have changed things, but I had no idea. And they were throwing each other under the bus. So I was like, well, I don't know. I guess it was all from them. So hope and pray that Monty lets me slide by one one week longer because he more. thinks I, ha I have his back. But it okay. didn't work out. So I have way. to ask you this. Mm -hmm. Big Bro Chella, it's you, Brittany, who you've always worked with. And you've got Taylor, Monty, Jasmine, mm -hmm. who... Kyle has brought up these thoughts in about people working together. You've got the whole the privacy of Kyle not intervening. Three of the main people that he's looping together. Mm -hmm. Why not ever bring? Because you weren't by yourself. You had Brittany, who had heard Kyle say these things. Why not ever? have the conversation with them during Big Brochella about the things that Kyle was, his thoughts about 
them working together possibly because of a cookout 2.0 or because of their backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Why not have that conversation at that time? Yeah. And looking back, that is something I definitely regret. I think my thought process at that time was, you know, number one, I, Kyle wasn't there. And so I was like, I didn't feel good about, you know, saying these things. And especially like in Big Brother, I did not expect anyone to just take it at face value and say, Michael said this, that's true. Case mm -hmm. closed. Mm -hmm. I I didn't feel comfortable with him not being there. And, and this, again, is, I think, a big misstep on my part that there was part of me mm -hmm. that was still like, you know, and... I think it's all, oh, sorry, my brain in, with this, I was like, oh no. gosh, I have yeah, like 10,000 okay. thoughts. But yeah. part of it too is that like, obviously we we forget the cameras are there, but we know the cameras are there. Like these are conversations that I'm like, are going to have real world repercussions. And I know that from watching the show and being on Big Brother Twitter, I know. And I didn't, I, I don't know. I just, I didn't feel comfortable at that time saying something without him there to, say his side or defend himself or, you know, throw out these accusations that were true. But I, I don't know. I just, I didn't feel right about that. And I think that there was a, at that point that should not have been my first thought. You know, my first thought should have been, this is information that impacts the people that I'm here with. I do think it's important for it to be known if he is going to continue in this game there was also the thought that, you know what, if he does go home, then that threat has been eliminated because Brittany and I are not on board with this. We are not going to go forward with this and be like, oh, scoop up Turner and Alyssa and be like, let's finish what Kyle, like, no, like that was never going to be a thing. So there was that wishful thinking that maybe this doesn't ever have to come into the game because like I said, I, from watching the show, I know when top, you know, sensitive situations come up like this, like it goes so far beyond the game. There are going to be all these real world repercussions or like, you know, there are, and, and to everyone, regardless, like yes to Kyle, but anytime that, you know, a person of color speaks on race, like go look at the Facebook comments, go look at, it's just like, it is going to be so ugly for all involved. And mm -hmm. I, I think a big mistake that I made is that I, in my real life, I am very much a person who's like, I can handle things on my own. I, mm -hmm. there's something, uh, there's a problem. Okay. Well I can fix it. I'm not going to ask for help because I'm independent yeah. and I can do this myself. And I think that was absolutely the wrong approach to this where I was like, I know Kyle has said this, I'm not going to go along with it and I can handle it and make sure that this isn't what happens. And okay, so I so, okay, so I want to say this, yeah, because uh, I have please. so many questions, yeah, around this, but I feel that if I there's there's a question I can ask you, and if I get a direct answer, then I don't have to ask so many other questions, okay. and I don't even have like a format for this. These are just my thoughts. It's it's like, um. Kyle came to you with these with these thoughts and I was watching live feeds. That's why I wanted to preface it with I am a live feed watcher. I actually didn't even watch the edited show, so I don't even know what they showed. Mm -hmm. I was strictly live feed, so I kind of got the raw footage information. So I know that when Kyle brought this to you, um, he brought it to you like mm, three to maybe four four weeks before it was exposed to um, everyone in the house. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, uh, and, and, and it's not even that it's like, so he brought it to you and then you kind of give, gave him a, like you did say to him, no, you're not wrong for feeling that way because I've kind of, I kind of understand or I kind of feel that way too. So I think what I want to clear up mm -hmm. um, and just to give you the opportunity to clear yeah, it up. Yeah, I'm glad because, because I've, I've seen the clip floating around and I have some issues yeah. with it. But. So so I'm like, I'm like this. Um, I played the game. I also watch the game. I'm a fan of the game. I think we're very similar <laughs> in our desire of the game. Like we watched it. We're super fans. We're analytical. We played it. We played a strategic game. I cannot deny that every single thing I did in that house, I, 
I'm smart enough and intelligent to know that it impacts the game. So I can never say, actually, no, that wasn't a game move because I know that I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a rookie. I might be, it might be my first time playing, but I'm familiar with Big Brother and I know that these things impact the game. So to say it wasn't necessarily a game move, it was just because at this time I felt that I'd had enough information I needed to reveal it. It kind of makes me want to ask more and more and more and yeah. more questions like, well, why didn't you want him to go at Direfest? Well, when he, well, what does it matter if he was there or he wasn't? Because even when you told Taylor and Monty, he still wasn't there. If he needed to be there, then why didn't we do a round table? Why didn't we do a, um, a house meeting? So it didn't matter. So I'm kind of like, as I'm listening, I'm like, well, I don't know why it mattered if he was there or not, because he wasn't there when you told Turner. He wasn't there when you told Monty and Taylor. It's, it's like, I almost want you to just be totally transparent and yeah. say, I do know it affects my game. And it it was better for my game for him to stay the time he stayed and to leave when he left or whatever you feel. But to say it was absolutely not a game move to a gamer and also to the people who are listening and who watched it, it's almost like we can't help but to come up with more questions and yeah. dig on it because it absolutely impacted and affected your game. And I I have said this, I think, and I'm black, and I think it's okay to say, I did use this as an opportunity or I did know that it impacted my game but I also did want to reveal this information, but it can't be, no, it wasn't a game move. But when Monty says, well, let's not evict him this week, let's evict him next week. And then you and Brittany are like, well, we think he should go this week. So it's like, was it even a little bit in your mind a game move for him, for that information to come out at that time? I, and people can take it the way they want to, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just like when Terrence said, I want him to stay so he can get a lesson. We know you ain't want him to stay so he could get no lesson. You wanted him to stay because it was better for your game. That I can respect because at the end of the day, it's $750,000 out there and we are trying to get to it. And so mm -hmm. everything we do impacts that decision, that move, that closer to that bag. And so when you say like it wasn't game, I wasn't leveraging this for game, it wasn't a game move. Me and Brittany just wanted to make sure we had this laid out, we had that laid out, which no other conversations were really had with Kyle in between time from Dire Fest to his to you revealing it to Monty mm -hmm. and Taylor to say, hey, we did some fact checking or, um, well, we just wanted to do an open table round to ta table discussion so he could be there to defend himself because he wasn't in either of those rooms. Yeah. What was walk me through the process and like let it just be transparent so that you don't have to keep defending yourself on this. But if that yeah. is your defense, you as an attorney know you're going to keep defending this and defending it yeah. and defending it every single time. Mm -hmm. I hope that you do understand that it is okay to say part of this was game and part of this was personal. But yeah. to subtract the game and totally label it as personal, I don't think anybody fully believes that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you deserve as, as good of a player as you were, as strategic as you were to come in and play the game that you did. Because I honestly was like, I wanted to see you in the final two seats because if you had won to me, you would be the person to beat in every other season, not the next winner. Anybody, everybody's going to come after BB24 and win the season, but they would, win the season, but that doesn't make them beat Michael. And mm -hmm. I think that you not owning this move or you not being transparent and 
and you're totally transparent, it takes away from Michael the player, Michael's character, Michael's game. And honestly, I don't feel like you should do that. But if you totally sit on the fact that I was not thinking about my game at all, it didn't benefit me, I went out the next week, I think you were gonna go out anyway. I don't think yeah. that that was something that was going to affect you. But I do think that you should have the opportunity to be transparent, whether it was a mistake, whether it was intentional, regardless of what it was, because you will always be bombarded with, but why, but why, but why? Mm -hmm. So I guess yeah. my question to you is, during the time that you revealed this information to Taylor and Monty and Turner, was part of that to impact your longevity in the game. Yeah, as, sorry, there's a lot there it that I want lot. to touch on, but, but I will touch say on it. as we a got short time. answer, obviously yeah. I recognize that, and I, and I said this in the house meeting, I don't know if it made this show or if it was on the live feeds, but anything, as much as as a house, we said this issue transcends the game, there is no stopping the game. We can say, yeah. you know, there's no like, okay, turn your game switch off. This doesn't, we can't talk about this in a game context. Like I know that any information that is shared will impact the game. So obviously mm -hmm. I knew that sharing the information would very likely result with Kyle going home that week. I knew okay. that. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, oh, like... I was just going to share it and then the game, we were all going to ignore it. And then you know, I, I knew that he likely was going to go home that week. Um, I think where, oh gosh, what order do I tackle this? In? I think where um, I feel like I, in, in the house meeting, I very much was clear with everyone. I was like, you know, this is the information. Here it is, you know. I laid it out the exact same. I laid it out to everyone else, including Kyle himself. And I did not, what I didn't want to do was make it about me. Like, I understand I am involved in this situation, but the takeaway, I was like, you know, like how this information impacts people and impacts the game. I don't want to turn this into a, oh, poor me, or even like a, well, oh my gosh, applaud me. I saved, like, no, like I, mm -hmm. and I tried to mm -hmm. make that so clear that I was like, Mm -hmm. I am not trying to make this situation about me. And so, like, I think that's why it's kind of frustrating to hear people like, oh, Michael, no, Brittany, I don't think that playing we... the victim. And not you, not you, like yeah. from other people. No, no, no. Like, they're playing yeah. the victim. And it's like, mm -hmm. because they said it wasn't good for their games. Like, I it, exactly why I thought this would be bad for my game in, is exactly what happened and why it was bad for my game. Like, I was never like, oh, my gosh, Kyle going home. Oh, that's so bad for my game. Like, I never thought that. And I think people yeah. were looking at it as like a very short term, like what happens this week? He is saying is bad for his game if Kyle goes home. Like, no, I am not saying that at all. But I knew that any information that you bring in, people are going to be skeptical of it. They are going to question your motives, your intentions. This information could change how people view me. And I do think it did that. And I knew that was not good for me. And so I, I do stand by the fact that when I when Brittany and I said this is not good for our games to share. It would have been a thousand times better for us to keep our mouths shut, let you know, let things happen. And like, if I really wanted to only use this as game and strategy, I would have saved it till I needed it. Like I already had the veto at that point. I was going to use it on Brittany. We were safe for the week. It, exposing Kyle did not buy me another week in the house. So I think that was another thing where people, I also got a lot of pushback, like, well, you waited till you were safe. And like, I can understand how that looks, but like in my head, I was, I was uh, so afraid that people were going to think Brittany and I were making this shit up and that we were using it yeah. as a hail Mary to do whatever. So I was like, and that's why, you know, when everyone came back from dire fest, like um, number one, that, that HOH competition, like, took place really late. Like, I think I got five minutes with Turner at like 5 a.m. And then um, Brittany and Taylor go up and it's like, great. If I say something now, he is scrambling. He's trying to cover his tracks because he's been blindsided. If I 
say something, you know, before the veto. Well, he thinks he's getting backdoored. Obviously, he's going to say whatever he needs to save himself. So when I had the veto and I was safe, I was like, nobody can question that I am doing this to save myself this week because I've already saved myself. So that was something that played into that week and the timing, I think, because I, w- I was terrified that people were going to think that I was making this up. And sorry, I'm probably going so far off on a tangent. Am I no, uh, remotely it's your, where you've I got need the to be? Floor. But like, I've and if re- please redirect me back to any of your points or questions. Okay. I'm, I'm really not trying to um, avoid any. So, so, but. so question. Mm-hmm. So when Monty says, let's just wait and get him out next week. Why not wait and get him out next week? So for for me, I think there was definitely I felt I felt very guilty that I did not share things sooner. And I knew, okay. like I knew that Monty and Taylor were going to be on the block that week at the end of it. Like that's, and maybe I'm wrong if you know something I don't from the live feeds, but even from talking with other people, that's what was going to happen that week from my understanding. And I was like, I had this information that I should have said something and I didn't that would affect Monty and Taylor. And now they are paying the price because I did not share it. Like I felt so fucking guilty about that. And, um, Oh, I had a thought that I was like, and I lost it. Um, Oh, because so coming back in from dire fest, you know, Turner's the HOH and I'm like, okay, cool. Like we're going to do our leftover thing. Maybe, you know, the information that Kyle had is not uh, impacting the game. That's good. I don't want that to be influencing Turner's decision. Well, so Turner had probably a 45 minute conversation with Kyle um, after the HOH. Kyle was always up in that HOH room. And I don't know. I'm not going to say that he, you know, he was pitching Turner on Mm -hmm. the basis of what he was saying. But I did look at Kyle because Turner was having maybe like two minute, three minute, five minute conversations with everyone else. I was like, Kyle is in Turner's ear. Monty and Taylor ending up on the block at the end of this after Kyle's in his ear all week, me knowing what Kyle has said previously and whether or not that had any impact, because at that point I didn't know about all of the exposing of the leftovers in the after party. So from my perspective with the information I had, I was like, I fucked up here. I should have said something sooner and I didn't. And now it is going to result in two people who I care about being on the block and if i had shared this information this might not be the situation that would that we would be in so there was a lot of guilt that i i had about that and i was like like i probably waited too long and it's gonna look bad no matter what Mm -hmm. i do at this point but i i would rather share the information and have people be mad that i waited than allow this to happen because again from my perspective i i thought it was a product of Kyle's thought process at that point, and maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but that that influenced my decision. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not going to sit here and say again that I did not consider the game aspect of it yeah. at all. But that okay. was something that when I say like, because I talked, you know, in that house meeting about, you know, it really did weigh on. It really did weigh on me because. The past week, you know, even though Monty and Taylor, when we had talked about taking Kyle out next, you know, they were still talking about like, you know, how much they love Kyle and like what a great person he is. And I'm not saying that he's not or anything like that. But to like, that was like eating was like, I have this information that you don't know that maybe would really change how you feel. But I also, um, oh, and I think that gets back to a point that you had said why we didn't, um, you know, like the separation thing. Um, Mm -hmm. And so again, kind of going back to what I said, anytime race or sensitive topics get brought in, it gets ugly in the house, outside the house. And that's why, yes. And that's why I was like, I, I didn't want to put Monty and Taylor in a position where like, Hey, I, because, and it was so another reason why it was so complicated. It was so intricately tied into the leftover alliance, which at that point I didn't know that everyone knew about. So it was like, if I reveal this, I am blowing up your games as well. And that's why I wanted to go to them first and talk to them and be like, this is the information that I have. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't want to force them to do anything. And if they had told me and Brittany at that point, we don't want this information in the game. 
I would have dropped it at that point and I, I would not have gone and shared it. And Brittany and I talked about that. Um, like I, I did not feel that it was my place to tell anyone how to feel about the information, okay. what to do with the information. Um, I know that I did express, you know, I was, uh, if I had my preference, Kyle would go this week. And I know I did say that. Um, but that's, Oh my gosh, sorry. I still feel like I have so much stuff to say no. about this. Um, it, and so, and I then mean, it, you can say, Michael, <laughs> listen, I'm not in a rush. You can okay. say whatever you want to say. It's okay. for me, I'm here to just have a conversation with you. Yeah. And this is a platform you can leverage to say what you want to say. Mm. So I'm not here you to negate what you're saying. I'm not here to pull contradictions from what you're saying. I'm just yeah. asking questions as I think about them, but feel free to speak. Okay. Yeah, you speak said freely. you wanted to I'm, see I'm inside my mind. That. I'm sorry. It's yeah. a mess. <laughs> take me take um, me through it. No, it's okay. But I'm so here. that's why that's why I told Monty and Taylor first. And you know, there was also, again, part of me that was like, if I, you know, we call everyone in and say this information, I didn't know how Kyle was going to react. Um, and based on the clips that I have seen when he first heard about this, he did adamantly deny it and said, this isn't true. They're lying. They're making this up. Um, and, and eventually, you know, I think that lasted for just a little bit. And then, you know, it played out as we saw, but um I did. I was also like, again, a big fear of mine was like, people aren't going to believe this. And then it's going to, you know, blow up on Brittany and I that we are try making up lies about using race. And so it was like, this could get really ugly really fast. Let me talk to Monty and Taylor because they're the two people that this is really impacting, you know, from the, you know, personal standpoint, as well as the game standpoint that this was an alliance. If we talk about this, it's probably going to blow up this alliance because there's really no way to talk openly and honestly, transparently about what happened without explaining, you know, the divisions. And it, it was because it was within an alliance that these were recognized. So I wanted to talk to them first. So that's, that's what we did. We talked to them first to explain. Um, and then um, from that conversation, once it was decided, you know, we're going to tell other people about this, um, um, Monty, I, I don't remember. I don't want to, sorry, my nose is just really bad. <laughs> um, okay. I don't want to okay. say who did what, but I, it was agreed upon that Monty and Taylor would bring it to Terrence just based off the nature of what the conversation was and, um, Monty and Terrence, we knew, you know, in a game, they weren't working together so much, but they did have some sort of connection and bond that we, we knew. Um, and so we felt Monty was probably the best person to talk to Terrence about this. And then, uh, we're kind of said like, Hey, like you, you know, it was Monty and Taylor talk to Terrence. We'll talk to Alyssa and Turner. Um, and I guess it never really crossed my mind to do a, a house meeting to expose the information. Um, I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, interrupt me, I, ask questions. Like, that's fine. Okay, I have so many questions. I have so many questions. So you two, you and Brittany decide to talk to Monty and Taylor. Yes. But not Terrence, mm -hmm. but have Monty and Taylor play telephone with fragile information to Terrence and deliver it to him based on their interpretation of the conversation while you and Brittany have a conversation with Turner and Alyssa. Um, I don't even, I don't even know. And then I also want to ask, did you really feel that Kyle had um, any kind of uh, legitimacy to his claims when you told him, no, he wasn't, um, wrong for feeling that way. Okay. Yeah. So uh, why again, why allow Monty why allow Monty and Taylor to play telephone with very fragile information? And I guess in my head, I was not thinking. Of, obviously, I knew that it was sensitive information, but I guess I was like, because Brittany and I, when we shared everything, we were very careful to lay everything out. You know, this is what was said this day. You know, so on and so forth. And I. And, and now that you say the game of telephone, I'm like, yeah, that was 
that was stupid. We should because not have done that. That's that's why it looks. That's why on the outside, it appears, it is game. Because if it was, if it was, if it was game, if game is eliminated and it is about, um, how I personally feel about this, then mm. if I feel that this is affecting, um, people of color that we that I live with, um, or a certain demographic of people and it is not game at all, then I'm going to have that conversation with Monty and Taylor and Terrence together. Mm -hmm. But because it was broken up and it was Monty and Taylor, and then you allowed Monty and Taylor to go talk to Terrence because you weren't necessarily working with Terrence that closely, that's where the gaming of it comes into place. Yeah. If it was just all about, hey, there are principles here that don't align with mine that affect all three of you, then I want to share this information that I have with the people that it affects. Then it mm -hmm. seems that it would have been handled differently. Um, so that part for me is just a little confusing as to why it was handled in that way. Yeah. And then... Um, I do want to backtrack and go to, cause like I told you, I wouldn't even have all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and honestly, just so you know, I didn't plan to spend a lot of time on this, um, but I understand that it is sensitive and this yeah. is something that you want to clear the air on. So you take yeah. as much time as you want. Yeah. I don't and want you to feel like I'm like trying to come at you because no, I honestly, this is, I'll tell you how I personally felt about it. And I've not even expressed this publicly, but I do feel that conversations of race um, regarding people of color just are conversations that people of non-color don't regularly have and are not as comfortable with having. Um, are, they're not comfortable having these conversations. And it's also not comfortable if, with people that people that are non-color to have such sensitive conversations with people of color. And what I'll say, and I'll be as, as, as transparent as I can, it's not always easy for white people to have conversations about race when it regards black people. I think that that is something, or even people of color, I think it is a topic that people of non-color always second guess like how do i approach this how do i talk about it do i talk about it with just the people that i'm comfortable with how do i approach this conversation with people who are people of color that it may be affecting so i i did not not understand the uncomfortableness you had with sharing the information and trying to express it but now that we're digging and digging, I'm kind of like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but if it wasn't personal, then, and it if it was personal or it was more of centered around what personally makes me uncomfortable, why was it handled so strategically and the moves that it was handled seem to be game moves. Mm -hmm. Like we'll have the conversations with Taylor and Monty because we're close to them. We're working with them. This affects them. We don't want to lose them. They'll go on the block because of it. We might not have one of them here. We'll tell them. It also does affect Terrence, but we're not working with him. We don't have a relationship with him. If we lose him, it doesn't matter. You guys go and tell him what I just told you, even though what I told you is my interpretation, me sitting on it for four weeks, me giving it to you and relying upon you to relay the message I just gave you exactly like I gave it to you so that it's not taken out of context. Mm -hmm. And then we non-people of color will go have the conversation with the other nine people of color where it's more comfortable for us while you have that conversation to me, all of those different moves 
align with game. Mm -hmm. And I could be wrong. Yeah. So I think maybe I didn't say it before, but there was like, again, I recognize that there is no just, you know, oh, shut shut the game off. Like, it, it doesn't work yeah. like that. Like, as much as we can say this is, transcends the game, the game, CBS doesn't say pause, you know, game's off. So for us, uh, or for me, you know, looking at t- telling Monty and Taylor first, you know, it was because at that point, again, I didn't know that the leftovers had been blown up and exposed. Okay. Um, I had suspicions, but it was like, that's why I, and to have that, open, transparent conversation with them. It had to be, you know, week five, Kyle said this and about the Alliance and, you know, X, Y, Z. And it was very much at that point, it it was so much tied with the game in that, in some of those conversations that I, and, and that's where, again, I probably messed up and, you know, there was that thought like, cause Terrence was awake that morning. It was like, do we bring Terrence up here? But I also was like, I know that this information needs to be shared. I also don't feel comfortable blowing up Monty and Taylor's games at this point with it. Okay. Um, because like I said, at that point I was like, you know what? It's probably going to be Monty and Taylor ending up on the block at the end of this week. Um, and that's kind of what I thought would happen, um, if mm-hmm. assuming that the Direfest people were sticking together. But um, to you know expose the leftovers to Terrence, I, I didn't feel like this is a decision that I get to make based yeah. on all of this. So there, there was that consideration, and obviously, just you know, obviously, I'd spent more time with Monty and Taylor. I mean, I had that whole yeah. last so week you were before, so I did feel closer to them. To them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. Like it was a, a conversation I would have had with Terrence, but after we talked about it, you know, it was like this information we thought should come from someone, you know, the closest person to Terrence. It might yeah. be easier to have that conversation or more productive or whatever the case may be. Um, I, it, to be honest, it never even crossed my mind about the telephone. I was just like, oh, like I explained it. Monty and Taylor fully yeah. understand. Yeah. If they have the conversation, I, and, and come to find out, I guess Terrence did misunderstand what was said at first and thought that Brittany and I, these, this was our idea that yeah. about this alliance yeah, or whatever. He immediately told Kyle, like, yeah, I heard Michael and Brittany were trying yeah. to start a all-white alliance. And so that was an oversight on my part. And yeah. I think, you know, another thing that played into it, too, was that, you know, the issue of timing. It's like, okay, yeah. it's Sunday. The veto meeting is tomorrow morning. We want this information to be out there, not yeah. like as a last second thing, like, oh, did hey, let you, me pull you right before the veto. Did Michael, you know this? Yeah. Michael, did <laughs> you want Kyle to go home that week? Yes or no? Yes. yes I did or want no. Kyle to go home. Yes. Okay. We're done. Will... All right. We're... <laughs> no, no, go sorry, ahead. There, I want to do that to you. Um, <laughs> the one thing that I do want to say, um, and like I said, I think people are, people have probably made up their minds and no matter what I say, they're going to you know, say like, oh, he's full of it here or full of it there, whatever. You know, people are going to make up their mind and believe what they want. One thing I do want to say and clarify, and again, maybe this does not do anything, but the week five, the conversation that I had with Kyle. So, you know, what the first day when he talked, you know, he brought these things up, you know, he talked about, um, gosh, I don't even remember how it started, but he talked about that, um, Jazz, he came to so, you. You were in yeah. the HOH. Or so, so, so I went, to re- rewind it a little farther. Monty had told us. I don't remember if it was the night I won HOH or at the end of his HOH week. But Monty told us that he and Joseph had been approached for an alliance with Indy, Jasmine, and I think Terrence. And so Monty told us that, and I'm like, okay, like, like cool, like thanks for letting us know, whatever. Okay. And so that was one of the things that I think triggered that conversation with Kyle. Because Kyle was saying that if we get down with the leftovers, there are these options that Monty and Joseph have that the rest of us don't. Which I'm like, I see that. I understand that because they've been approached for an alliance. That makes sense. They want to work with Monty and Joseph. They don't want to work with us. And so some of the information that Kyle was saying, I was like, yep, I totally follow that. I understand where you're coming from. That other people in the alliance, if things should hit the fan and we have to turn on each other, they kind of have something they can jump into and we don't. So I understood okay. where he was going with that. 
so that was discussed um, between me and Kyle. We discussed, you know, how far do we go with the leftovers? Do we really think we're going to go to the final seven? Mm -hmm. Um, At some point, is it going to be enticing for people within the alliance to say, hey, you know, because the leftovers were made up of arguably seven of the strongest competitors in the game. Yeah. So it's natural to think that, hey, at some point, people are going to want to jump ship. And would they rather compete against, you know, these, these three people or us? So there were there was a lot discussed there that conversation and I've seen the clip floating around that's like a minute of just Kyle saying the you know cookout 2.0 whatever how yeah. he phrased it there was a lot that was discussed beyond just that um, okay so I do want to make that so, clear so, so it's kind of kind of to to um, give him more context around his thoughts it wasn't he didn't pull it out of thin air but well, it, it's he's... not to like defend kyle here but okay I, like i there kyle did have valid game non-race related points that he was making okay. and then when he tied okay. it in later to saying well there's a unifying goal between these individuals and what he was then and I was like, okay, now you're losing me. Like I can see okay. it. Cause like, you know, for example, like we talked about how big of a threat Joseph was because of his social game. And I'm like, yep, mm-hmm. I see that because it's mm-hmm. very apparent with the way everyone talks about him. So mm-hmm. things like that. But then when he started talking about the cookout and unifying goals, I was like, yeah. okay, like now you're, yeah. you're losing Where me. And going? I did have uh-huh. conversations with him. I don't know exactly what day it was. I, if it, it could have been that day because he specifically, I remember him saying, Monty, Joseph, and Taylor within the leftovers are very close. And at that point, I knew that I had a final three with Taylor. So yeah. in my mind, I'm like, no. And so like I I asked him, I was like, I don't see it that way. What can like mm-hmm. what examples do you have? Like, is there something that I'm not seeing? And he didn't have anything like I see them strategizing. I see them doing this. I see them doing that. There is none of that. Um, I he also brought up about, you know, the alliance that had been pitched to Monty and Joseph, and he talked about that. Um, and I, you know, I told him, I was like, I, Monty willingly offered this information to us unprompted. I trust that if he wasn't loyal to the leftovers, he would not yeah, have shared that. I don't think that yeah. is something he is considering. So I need to even worry about. And so, and I fully acknowledge and recognize that I should have shut it down concretely. And yeah. I, in my mind, I was like, okay, I'm going to lead him to the conclusion himself. Like, I'm going to say these things to make it clear that, like, in in my mind, I am being clear because in my mind, if you're not like, yes, absolutely, let's do this alliance, let's get these people in a room, you're saying no is what I'm thinking Mm -hmm. as someone who loves Big Brother and is a fan and it's like, you know, when someone's giving you the runaround. So I'm thinking like, okay, like, without, you know, severing this relationship that I have with Kyle, I'm telling him no. And so that's kind of what's going on in my head. The next day, and this is where like the the clip says, and people have been like, Kyle asked you if his cookout theory, if he was overthinking about like he didn't. Kyle said to me, uh, and because I got those questions when I um, was evicted, and I was like, gosh, like I don't remember that's how the conversation went. And so then when I saw the footage, Kyle says like, "Am I over overthinking what we talked about Mm -hmm. yesterday?" And in my head, I'm like thinking you know, turning on the leftovers, doing this, doing that. There was a lot of things that we talked about yesterday that was not yeah. just cookout 2.0. Because yeah. in my head, I was thinking, was like, I remember having a conversation with him being like, no, you're not overthinking. Like, we should be preparing for the end game, like in my head. Yeah. And watching it back, like, especially watching the clips back, I'm like, oh, like, I see now exactly what everyone else was seeing. And it, like, I under, like, I pro- in the moment, I probably should have seen that as well. But I also look and there was like a shorter clip and then a longer one. And in the longer one, I specifically say about talking about like, yeah, like a seven person alliance and going to the final seven doesn't happen. You know, these are things to think about. It's like in my head, I know that I was never telling Kyle, I agree with your race related theories. And I and I don't care if people don't want to believe me on that. Like, I know that is in my the moment. And I think it goes to intent versus impact. My intent was never to encourage Kyle the impact of what I said and not concretely shutting it down. I do think that I 
I can't shy away from the fact that he took encouragement from that and thought that I was thinking the same thing and validating. And so I will say that I definitely fucked up there. I made a mistake in not concretely shutting it down. Wasn't my intent, but that was the impact that it had. And so I will take any heat or criticism for the way that I handled it. The one thing that I'm not going to sit here is, you know, with people saying that like, oh, you knew that he was talking about he, when he directly asked you about his cookout theory and you agreed with him, like, no, that is not what happened. That was ultimately the way that he took it. And watching the clip, I fully understand because if you play those two little clips back to back, that is exactly what it looks like. So if mm-hmm. that's all somebody saw, I'm not going to judge them or say like, yeah. you know, I, I understand where you're coming from. I just want to clear that up on my mm-hmm. end that... In no way, shape, or form did I ever think that I was telling Kyle, I agree with you. I am thinking about these things too. Because that, uh, no, I did not think that. And I told him that when I told him, you know, I don't, if Monty wouldn't have told us about this alliance, if that's what was going on, or like his loyalty is with the leftovers because he shared this with us. And so in my mind, like I, I know what I meant, what my intent was, but again, that doesn't absolve me of any wrongdoing and I should have concretely shut it down. But I do want to clear that up because I know that's been floating around out there and I've seen that and I'm like, okay, like not, not the case, (laughs) but I don't know. (laughs) No, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, um, I I tried to be quiet because I wanted you to have the floor and fully express yourself and get it out because it has been a lot of talk about that. There's been a lot of, um, opinions based around it and, we don't always get to be heard and we don't always have a, an, an opportunity to clear the air. So I hope that you feel you were able to get some things out off your chest. Mm-hmm. Um, those who are trying to understand your thought process, I think that you laid out a lot of details around that. And um I had so much more and I still have so much more to talk to you about. So I'm ready to move on if you are. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think I'll end it with this is that I think as people, we like binaries. We like it's good. It's bad here. It was game. It was not game. I Mm -hmm. think the ultimate thing I, there were elements that I was like, this is beyond the game and there are personal feelings involved. And from a moral standpoint, I want to do the right thing, but I can't sit here and say, I did not recognize the impact this would have on the game or by sharing this. I knew Kyle was going to go home and I knew that Kyle going home, you know, in the short term was probably good for my game. But at the same token, I knew that sharing this information was going to have a lot of blowback and probably damage relationships and be bad for my game in the long run, which I think it was. But I just think uh, the way that I've seen it talked about, it was was this or it was that. And I think a lot of times with situations, it's probably a gray area. And I do think this was a gray area. It's not black or white. Yeah. So that's what I want to say, like for people who are like, it was only strategic. It was like, you know, and it's honestly kind of like, It'll, I'm sorry, I'm about to make it about me and it's not about me, but I was just like, I hope people would know me enough to know that this situation I really do care about. And I would okay. was not like, oh, scheming, like how can I manipulate and twist and let me save this as a whip it out as a trump card when I need, like, no, like okay. there were elements of everything that I've discussed and I think people want it to be one thing or the other and it's probably, you know, somewhere in between. But. I have to take your word for that. And I do. Okay. All right. If you think I'm full Moving. of shit, call me out on it. But oh, that's kind no, of my... No, my. no I, 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 um, as I said, I, I think that it is a touchy subject. I think it's sensitive. I think that you had some information that I do not think that you were um, mentally, emotionally or in your game ready to express that because I don't think that you had enough around it. And I think that also you used it at a time that you felt that I need to share this information. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, it's not about what I believe 
I don't I don't sit here in front of you or in front of my audience and feel like Michael's full of shit. I don't. I think yeah. that um you I think both. Not both like you're full of shit. I think <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that it was uncomfortable. I think that you had some information. I think that this impacted your game. I think that this impacted Kyle's game. I think that there was timing involved. And I think that um, the, 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 the who it would be affected was involved. I think that it was a whole conglomerate of um, information that um, you decided to release when, when, when the time permitted. But I don't think it was solely personal and I don't think it was solely game. So I'm done. Okay. Um, As you were saying, I was like, oh, I thought of 15 more things, but like, I'm, <laughs> I think that's a perfect way. You to gonna have sum to just call me Michael. I'm not about to do this because <laughs> no, I, I think that's a perfect way to sum it up and I am ready to move on. But I okay. think, oh, sorry, last thing I'm going to say, I do think yes. that obviously I mishandled the information that I had and I've apologized to everyone involved. And I want to t say that again, that I truly am sorry and that moving forward, I think I have a better understanding of what to do in situations like this. And I should have been prepared coming in. Unfortunately, I wasn't prepared for this situation, but I'm going to hopefully take this as an opportunity to to learn from the, the scenario and know how to apply this better in, in everyday life if the situation or something else comes up and know that it, I need to be more vocal, um, even if I feel uncomfortable. So... I, I think that. that's big of you to say. I do, and I I do think that it is. Um, it it's not lost on me that these conversations are just not easy to have. So, you know, anybody expecting you to run back and be like, "Hey, guess what? I just heard." As soon as you heard it, that's not really realistic because, as I said before, it's not always an easy conversation to have. But anyway, now yeah. you had um, a deal with Turner. Mm -hmm. and you honored your deal with Turner. So let me see. My notes say, I know you had a deal. You had to honor your deal with Turner from the week prior, but do you think it was a mistake um, not taking him or Monty out that week like Brittany suggested? Because even if you had stayed true to keeping Turner, you could have gotten rid of Monty, and Monty did mm -hmm. end up being the one who won the veto and made the decision yep. to use it to nominate you. How do you feel about that week that you respect, you honored your deal to Turner? Would you do it different? I don't necessarily regret um, not taking Turner out. Um, okay. But I do regret not taking Monty out. Um, I think that at least from what I have been told and what Turner has said, <laughs> Which and week? Monty what do you has mean said, <laughs> the week oh, that you didn't take out Turner, you should have taken out Monty. Yes. Um, or, because okay. it's uh, from what Turner has said that double eviction, Brittany was his target. It was not me. I did not go up. Um, yeah. so if that was true, I mm -hmm. don't regret not taking him out. Um, okay. I also think that Turner was somewhat, easily influenced um so i i didn't view him as this huge threat necessarily um i do think because i do think if monty had gone home i think turner probably you know with peace and love i don't he would necessarily he love the way, with you yeah i don't and i don't necessarily love the way that turner played the game with the guys you know it was pooch and then once pooch was gone it was kyle when kyle was gone he went to monty my, so yeah. i think logically if monty had gone he probably would have come he would have been you and which, you know, was not the game that I wanted to play. And I probably should have yeah. recognized that that's the game he was playing and been like, yeah. oh, I got to do something about that. But um, he was I the do side think... chick. Sorry. <laughs> with pe if, if you say with peace he's and like love, my main, he's like, my main is gone. I got to be somebody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peace. Um, with so pe I, oh, you said if I preface I, it with peace and love, I can say whatever yes, I want. You can say whatever because Ooh. it's with peace and love. That's, that's what with Turner is. Yeah. With peace and love, he was the side chick. He said, <laughs> oh, my main is gone. I'll be yours now. Oh, they're gone. I'll be yours now. Oh, Monty's gone. He would have been you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't think keeping Turner in was the worst thing. I mean, ultimately, yes, he was the HOH that took me out. And the one thing that I was so scared to watch back, and I did go look at this, was um, because the double eviction HOH, I was like, 
Well, what was the score between Monty and Brittany? And they would have gone to a tiebreaker if Turner had not been in that competition. Like, oh, don't even start with the what ifs, Michael. But so maybe it was a mistake because if Brittany had won that tiebreaker, I don't think I would have hit the block. Turner yeah. probably would have been evicted. Um, and yeah. then I would have been eligible to play at five. Oh, I so. hate a what if. Oh, yeah. Don't there, oh, so me. many, so many. But um, the way what that I, I can won like, that thing. Yeah, the way that I can justify it, it was like whatever mistakes that I made ultimately did something to lay a path for Taylor to win. And I can be happy with that because like if I couldn't win, I wanted it to be Brittany or Taylor. So if Taylor won because I made a bunch of mistakes or I helped her by not helping myself, I'm happy. I can I can rest easy. Oh, my gosh. So. Okay. All right. So I do want to get to when you saw um, Brittany get evicted, but we'll we'll go. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. So. All right. There was one time you were HOH and you were doing a cam talk and you were just in your villain era. And <laughs> I tweeted about it and I was like, oh, not me standing. Michael. Michael was out here. He don't give up. He was <laughs> like, I came to play this game. I saw you on a path um, of of being a comp beast, and you were right there with Janelle. Like you, you were you were setting and breaking records. And then, as you're on the block, you deliver this nail biting, toe curling, throat grabbing, hair snatching <laughs> eviction speech. <laughs> I was like, yo, you said, and this chick right here, don't trust her. I don't trust her. She told me she was working with you. She lied to you and told you this. I said, damn. Michael, what was going through your head? What the hell? Where was this Michael all season? Had you saved it? Did you know you were going to get up there and say that? Like, what the heck? You know, I had... So I campaigned until Julie called us back to the couch. So like, okay. I, as Brittany was giving her speech, I was like, oh gosh, what do I say? So like, that was all the time I had to prepare that. And, you know, that is definitely a side of my personality. Like when I play games and I'm competitive and I play to win, I, that like the claws will come out. I was never in a okay. position where I really had to publicly, you know, do anything like that because that was okay. the first time I sat on the block on eviction night. Um, so, you know, I, I think it, it really surprised people because, you know, for 65 days, they saw calm, cool, collected Michael, like kind of nice, yeah. you know, not yeah. going to yell at anyone. But so in that moment, but I just knew that if I didn't try everything I could to stay, I would regret it. And I was like, if I yeah. go home and at that point too, a lot of the information that I shared, and actually basically everything I shared in the living room, everyone else already knew. So it was like, you know, maybe I didn't have to share all that because people knew it already. But it was like, ah, as a reminder, you know, this is kind of stuff that went down this week. And here's reasons maybe why I'd be better, you know, to keep me because I've done what I've said I would do. And I, I think I said something about, you know, not saying a lot, keeping my cards close to my chest and sticking my neck out for the people that I care about. And it's like, hopefully they see that. And So, Michael. Yes. Let's just say the girls on that couch listened to your speech. And that's one thing I hate about Big Brother. It's like when we've got our minds made up and we're sitting on the couch and we got to go vote, we know who we're voting for. But I mm-hmm. miss the days where a speech would change your mind and you might be like, oh, my God, I don't know who to vote for. So let, was your speech true? Had they voted to keep you an evicted Brittany? I think I already know the answer to this. <laughs> would you have worked with the girls to get Monty and Turner out of there. One thousand percent. That was I know you would have. Listen, I was over here at home like that's messed up because I will vote for him. (laughs) I mean, seriously. I'm like, don't put me on Big Brother because (laughs) I'm voting. I'm like, wait, I'm voting for him. That was insane. I kind of was like, oh my God, but then to me, like, you're like the DX of my season. Like, I wanted to keep DX long term because I knew that mm-hmm. he could help me. But I also was like, but how am I going to get him out? So yeah. it's like, if they would have kept you, like, how would they get you out? It was like their only opportunity. When I saw you on the block, it was like me. I was like, 
Yep. Never said on the block. I knew I knew if I ended up on the block, I was going home. So mm-hmm. you knew you were going home. You gave it all you got. Yeah. I knew I really you would have worked to, with them. Yeah. I, and I really hope, too, that it was like Turner's HOH, Monty Zavito, like the jury's going to give them the credit. So I was really hoping yeah. that they would say, like, you know, keep me. And because at that point, you know, there were still three HOHs left. I would either lose the next one or if I won the next one, I'd be ineligible the following one. So like, you know, there's yeah. still, and to be honest, I do think it was probably the right move to get me out. But I was of like, course. maybe they'll see. When were they going to get, um, when were they going <laughs> to get you out? Are you kidding? Okay. So here's a hypothetical. Yeah. They kick out Brittany. It's, it's Taylor and Alyssa, right? Isn't that who it was? Yep. Who's your final two? Ooh. You know, Come on. I, I don't, I don't know. And the reason I'm going to say that is because I probably would have targeted Monty if I'd won final five HOH. And mm-hmm. then at that point at final four, I felt, oh, when I saw the final four. So you got four, you, Taylor, Alyssa, Turner. Yeah. If that had been the final four and like, I know I would have won that veto. Like watching that, I did go back and watch that. I was like, oh my gosh, they're making so many mistakes on the days. And like, I could say these days backwards and forwards. So like, Damn. at that point, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Because Turner, we recognized Turner's jury management was terrible. You would have just so taken like, Turner. Would Turner was your big D. To bring Turner, Turner was but your big D. I, I, with peace and love. <laughs> <laughs> I got to remember that. I need to put yeah. it on my forehead. With peace and love, Turner was your big D. <laughs> so I think, but also, I don't know. I recognize that I knew that Taylor was going to be next to impossible okay. to beat. Wait a minute, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Think... Wait a minute. Nope, 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 nope. Michael. Yes. Are you Xavier with peace and love taking big D? Or are you Kylan with peace and love taking taylor with do peace- you take the one to beat or do you take the one you beat yeah i said for my preseason interviews if i'm in a position to choose who i sit next to i'm taking the person i can win against so with peace and love i'm gonna be xavier because i want to win point blank period he already got the check so ain't nobody mad all yeah. right so let's see okay so uh so Brittany comes through are you surprised um, I wasn't surprised. I okay. don't think it was necessarily the right move to send Brittany home at that point. And that's, you know, me being on the jury side of things and knowing how the jury, you know, a lot of the jurors Uh-oh. were not team Brittany in the jury house. Okay. So for me, oh, I was okay. I knew that it was a mistake probably to evict her. Although if she did make it to the end and like evicted some of the big players, She would have had a chance, honestly, depending who she was sitting next to. But um, everyone in the jury were like, if they take Taylor, they are making such a big mistake. And okay, why? Let me ask you, when had you decided Taylor was going to be the person you vote for in jury roundtable finale? Yeah, Um, I would say. For me personally, I was like, if Britney's in the final two, I would have a hard time not voting for her. So okay. I would have had to hear what happened at, you know, finale night. How'd probably. you get there? Um, yeah. So for me, at that so once Britney walked out on stage to the round table, I was like, Taylor, if she makes it, you know, she has my vote. Um, okay. And I think that, you know, there are some people out there who get it who love this game. And I feel, I find yeah. a lot of the super fans understand why we voted for Taylor. Some people who aren't as big of super fans are like, well, Monty, you know, won these competitions and did this and that. But for me, like, it's so much more like as a fan, I love a good social game. I love someone who can be behind the scenes uh, just because a game is flashy. Doesn't mean that it's better than a game that's social and strategic. And I think that, um, and I don't think Monty played a bad game whatsoever. Like if Monty had been sitting there against Turner, I would have happily voted for Monty to win and been like, I just cast my vote for a good player. But just with the way that Taylor played in her social game and the way that she had people making moves that were not in, you know, 
other people's best interests. They were making moves in Taylor's best interest. Like I look at my HOHs and I was like, gosh, if I had done what I needed to for my game, it probably would have looked completely different. Or even, no. you know, the fact that Taylor got Monty to bring her to the final two, like when in the house, even I recognized it was like, gosh, like Turner would be probably a pretty easy win. But I think Leia. sometimes in Monty's head, I think he was equating competition wins or putting more weight on comp wins than the other aspects of the game. And I yeah. think that kind of clouded his judgment a bit. Last question. Yes. Would you play again? Of course I'd play again. <laughs> like that's not even um, something I have follow, to think about. Fo- follow up, follow up. Last question. <laughs> would you team with me or would you kick me out? Oh my gosh. I would team up with you in a second. Like I said, I want someone who I can strategize with and talk game and not, you know, worry that they're like, Oh, well now he's got to go. Cause he showed me. Matter that of fact, we're going to strike this from the record. He's lying. If he sees <laughs> me in the house, he's not working with me and I'm not working with him. Yeah. With peace and love, I would have to kick you out right away. <laughs> with peace and love, Michael, you've been, um, it's been an amazing conversation. I appreciate um, you allowing me into your thoughts, into your mind, you laying everything out. We've we've had nothing but time and you've given me um, all your time and I appreciate it. Please leave me with your final thoughts. Um, tell our tuners, our listeners, how they can um, find you. And if there's something you want us to look out for in the future, please leave us with that too. Okay. Um, I guess my final thoughts are just, I've watched Big Brother since I was eight years old. So being in the house this summer was an absolute dream come true. Even though I didn't win, um, it was still by far the best experience of my life. It was so much fun. It was wild. It was crazy. It was everything that I had hoped for. So, um, you know, regardless of the outcome that I didn't win, it is what it is, which uh, I never expected to say because I'm so competitive, but um, I'm super, I think it makes it a lot easier to swallow knowing that Taylor won because um, I'm just still so proud of her. But um, so thank you to everyone who's watched this, watched the show, supported, um, you know, regardless if you liked me or not, um, you supported the show and without people watching the show, there would be no big brother. So um Thank you to everyone. Um, as to where you can find me, I'm not like super, a super social media person. I'm trying to get a little better at it, but I think Instagram is, I want to say Michael Bruner three and my Twitter, I think is Michael Bruner zero one, but, um, I'm on there. I, I still have so many like DMS to go through that. I'm just like, Oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. Like I can't yes. even open up the folder because the number just goes up and up every day. But um, I'm going to hopefully be doing that. I've been saying that for like a week. But um, other than that, things to watch out for. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying to navigate post Big Brother life. So I don't know what's next for me. But um, I am on Cameo. If you want to send a message to a loved one, I've been having a lot of fun doing those. Um, I never thought in a million years people would want video messages for me, but I've been having a lot of fun with those. So, um, that's available. I think I have the link somewhere in my Instagram or something, but, um, uh, those are fun, but nope. Just if you want to check out my cats and (laughs) what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis, I guess, give me a follow, but nothing, nothing too big planned as of now, but we'll see what, what the future holds. Michael, thank you for joining me. I will say um, thanks for joining me and thanks for uh, coming on to the Warner Circle. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Um, This is a new world to navigate uh, as someone who was very private, jumping out into the public eye, being criticized every single day when in our real lives, no one probably ever tells us much about what we need to be doing and what we aren't doing and how they don't like what we're doing. It's a lot to take on. Protect your mental health, protect yourself, be selfish in this time and um, isolate yourself and stay away from everyone who feels entitled to you. Um, Family first, use your friends as support, your real ones. You will have supporters out there who support your game, the game you played. They'll love you. They'll follow you. I've got some, I've got very, I've got a lot of um, uh, consistent supporters and I really do appreciate them for always. And I mean, always like in my DMs, like, girl, we see what they're saying. 
But then there will be people who will definitely tell you, I don't want to follow you no more. I don't like you no more. You said this. I don't want to see you no more. I don't know why they feel the need to tell you that they leave and just leave me like you did the rest of your friends. You can ghost me. <laughs> I'm not sending out consolation. I'm not sending out part and packages or none of that. Just go <laughs> and go. We don't care if you leave. Don't even worry about the people who don't want you. I always mm. say the people who unfollow me are the best people because at least we're not wasting each other's time. <laughs> the people who follow me are the people who actually do understand me. So I lose thousands of followers every day. Don't care. You didn't like me. No way. <laughs> I'm good with that. Every time I lose, I gain. And I gain because those are the people who actually are starting to find me and recognize that they identify with me. Don't worry about it. You'll find your way. You have a career. You've got a family. You've got a lot going on. Live your life. Be happy. Don't let this negatively affect you. Use everything about it to take you to where you're trying to go. I wish you much, much success. You, you guys can follow me at Absolutely Gorgeous 100 on Instagram. You can follow me on Absolutely at Absolutely Tiff on Twitter. And you can also find me here on the Winner's Circle Thank you for joining. I'll catch you all next time. Bye.